Okay, here's a fairly simple uh, problem, but one in which we can demonstrate the different methods of capital budgeting uh, as a decision-making tool. Suppose you have two projects, and we'll call these projects J and Project K. Each of these has the same initial allocation, $18,000 to be spent today. Um, and for these, we have a 10.4% uh, cost of capital that we're going to be using. Now, what we want to be looking at here are in Project J, it has slow returns, 2,000, 10,000, and 20,000 in successive years, while Project K is an annuity which provides $10,000 each year. What you'll notice in looking at these things overall, the total return in dollars undiscounted is higher for Project J, but it takes longer to get your money than the 30,000 you're going to receive uh, for Project K. And what we want to try to do is demonstrate the use of the internal rate of return, net present value, and the modified internal rate of return. And we're going to demonstrate these using the tools that you have uh, within uh, Microsoft Excel to go ahead and finally find the answers. And we'll show on paper precisely what it is that we're looking at. Now, in each of these, when we have the method net present value, all that net present value is saying, let's find the present value of the inflows minus the present value of the outflows. Now, in this case, what we're looking at here is the sum in this problem from time period 1 to 3 of the cash flows in each period T divided by 1 plus the WAC raised to the teeth power. The present value of the outflows, this is simply cash flow at time zero that we're going to have. So in each case, it's subtracting off the $18,000, but weighting these by the 10.4%. In the case of the internal rate of return, all it's asking is to find the WAC where this present value of the inflows equals the present value of the outflows. Now, as a decision rule in this one, we're going to simply compare it to the WAC. If the NPV is positive, we'll adopt the project. In this case down here, we want to be able to compare the number we get, that, that weighted average cost of capital that sets these things equal. We want to compare it to 10.4%. And if we find that the number that makes these things equal is higher than 10.4%, we will adopt it. The modified internal rate of return is very similar to what's going on here with the internal rate of return, except funds are reinvested at the WAC. That means as you're getting your money each year, in Project J's case, the $2,000 you receive in the first year, in this case, it assumes that it's being reinvested at whatever the internal rate of return is. In this case, it assumes it's going to be reinvested at the WAC. So you always expect to find a nice relationship between the WAC and these numbers. Namely, the modified internal rate of return will always be a number closer to the WAC than is the internal rate of return. Now, we can show that here by just using the functions that are available to us in Excel. So let's look, first of all, at the internal rate of return. Go to your function wizard. And from that function wizard, we want to go to our financial functions and scroll our way down till we see this function IRR. The IRR function simply says, let's take from time zero all the way through to the end and find out what the rate of return is. And it's going to be 25.67%. So this is a project that we would adopt. Project K will do a similar type of thing here. We'll go to the same function. Uh, and again, under financial function, down to IRR. We'll go ahead and simply highlight all of the cash flows from time zero to the last period. It, you'll notice in each of these has a thing called guess. That's just to start the iterative procedure. If you don't put anything in, it just starts at a 10%. And we'll adopt both projects in here. They're both higher than the 10.4%. Now, IRR, because these are normal cash flow projects, is going to agree with the NPV. So both the NPV numbers we're going to get are going to be greater than uh, zero. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at the NPV. In this case, the function that we're going to use doesn't adequately deal with all of these cash flows. We need to separately add in the time zero cash flow. So we'll start here by taking the 18,000 and we'll add to that and then we can go to our function wizard. So if you go up to the function wizard and under the financial functions, we want to choose a function net present value, NPV. NPV has its, its arguments, first of all, weighted average cost of capital, and secondly, the values of the cash flows beginning at time one. So we go ahead and pop those in here. We can see it's got to be more than the 18,000. We indeed find a positive net present value, so that also tells us it agrees to adopt the project. In the case of Project K, again, time zero cash flow, and to that, we're going to add the function NPV. So again, I'll scroll down to the NPV function under financial and tell it the rate, which are 10.4%, and then tell it the future values, the 10,000 each year. Now, you did have an alternative here. We could have used the PV function since it is an annuity, but it'll give us exactly the same answer. So again, in this case, we will adopt the project because it has a uh, an NPV that is greater than zero. Now, interestingly, uh, the NPV is higher for Project J, but the internal rate of return is higher for Project K. So we want to take a look at this when we're looking at NPV profiles to talk the, about this at a later point in time. Now, finally, the MIRR is going to agree with this decision here, except the reinvestment is happening at the required rate of return. So if you go to the function wizard, under financial, scroll your way down to MIRR. What it does is it wants to know what are the values in project J. And again, that's from time zero all the way through. It asks for finance rate, which we don't need, but reinvestment rate is a key function for us. Again, funds are being reinvested at 10.4%. Uh, so when we do that, it's going to give us a value that is closer to the 10.4% than was the internal rate of return, but it's still going to be above it, 23%. Likewise, when we look at it here for Project A, we're going to find a number between 10.4% and 30.6%. So again, we go to our function wizard. We're going to choose under financial the modified internal rate of return. We're going to go ahead and highlight the values, cut time zero all the way through the final period, and we're going to reinvest at the WAC. When you put those things in there, it also gives us a value that is above the 10.4% and below the internal rate of return.